Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on FPL Now. Today we're going to be going over some knee-jerk reactions for Game Week 5 for the games that we've had so far. So if you're excited for the video, drop a like down below. Leave a comment who are you going to be transferring in this week. Subscribe if you're brand new. Let's get into the video. So for this knee-jerk reaction, what I'm going to be doing is going over the top five transferred in players so far and then the top five transferred out players so far. We still have a few more games to go this week. We have Brighton playing Leicester. We have uh, United playing West Ham. And then, of course, we have Chelsea playing Tottenham, which is going to be a big game. A lot of people still have captained Ronaldo and Lukaku. So I think the average points is kind of going to skyrocket after today if both of those players return. So... We'll have to wait and see what happens. Again, I could make this knee-jerk reaction video after all the games have played, but I'm going to be doing my wild card draft for game week six tomorrow. And there's some interesting players that people are bringing in this week already and already uh, transferring out. So here we have all of the top transfers in and all of the top transfers out. So coming in at number one, we have Antonio. People are already jumping back on the West Ham striker. I don't really see why not. I mean, they've got a Leeds game next, which... I mean, Leeds don't look good defensively at the moment. They've also got a lot of defensive problems. Ailing went off injured. Uh, Strag's still out, obviously. Um, they're just not too solid at the back. They just I don't think they've kept a clean sheet yet this season. And of course, Antonio is in fine form, apart from last week where he got the red card. He'd got like double-digit holes every single game week. He also scored in the Europa League midweek as well. I think most people are going to be dropping Jimenez for Antonio. Jimenez, a lot of people brought him in because of the fixtures, but he just doesn't seem to be hitting the nail on the head. He's just missing all of his chances. Bamford got very lucky at the weekend as well with his assist for Rafinha's goal. Probably shouldn't have gone in, so Bamford would have also blanked. He did literally nothing apart from that. He missed a pretty good chance, so... I think a lot of people are going to be jumping off the Bamford bandwagon and the Jimenez bandwagon and bringing Antonio back in. And I can see DCL going back into people's teams as well when he is fully fit. Next up, we have St. Maximan. Now, St. Maximan is a player who's... Okay, his team, Newcastle, they're not in the best place at the moment. Okay, there's a lot of problems with the club, but St. Maximan is still returning. I think he's returning like the last three game weeks, and his next few fixtures are pretty good. Watford away, Wolves away, Tottenham at home, and then Crystal Palace away. There's some pretty nice fixtures, and he is a very cheap forward option, which is why a lot of people are bringing him in. He's returning a lot. Wilson's obviously out at the moment, so I, I don't know if St. Maximan's going to be on penalties or not, um, but he seems to be a very good option right now, and people are kind of understanding that and jumping on the St. Maxman train right now. So if you do need a replacement for Jimenez um, or Bamford, if you're just not feeling them at the moment, I think St. Maxman could be a pretty good shout. Uh, next up, we have Ronaldo. Ronaldo being transferred in this much, I don't really know why at this point of the season. Like, obviously, if they've got Aston Villa at home next game week, which is a very, very good fixture, probably captain worthy. But after that, they host Everton, then they're Leicester away, Liverpool away, Tottenham. Like, the fixtures just aren't that pleasing and as well as that Chelsea's fixtures go incredibly well like Lukaku is such a better option than Ronaldo uh, from like game week seven eight onwards so why people are bringing in Ronaldo now when his fixtures are about to turn really really bad I'm not really too sure his fixtures obviously go insane from like game week third uh, game week 14 onwards like they're actually ridiculous like look at all of those twos and they just go for ages until like they play City in game week 28 from game week 14 to game week 27 like Ronaldo is just a hold like I I've never seen a fixture run that good before it's actually ridiculous so so obviously everyone's gonna be bringing him back in then and why wouldn't they that is just a ridiculously good fixture run. next up we have Saw who I do have in my team he finally oh, he got such a good return 15 points ridiculous so so good uh, he could have got more as well. He could have easily got a hat trick. Uh, he missed a pretty good chance um, early on in the game. But Saar, I think he's gone up to 6.1 now. A really, really good option. He's a very, very good budget midfielder. He's on pens as well. They host Newcastle next. The fixtures do get a little bit worse. Obviously, Leeds, Liverpool, Everton, Southampton, Arsenal, United, Leicester, Chelsea, City. So I'd probably jump off the Saar train around game week eight, maybe. If you have the funds, maybe upgrade him to like Mason Mount or something like that. But then their fixtures go really, really good again. Game week 16. Like I'm definitely bringing him in from game week 16 to um, game week 23. Like that's just a that's just a given. He's such a cheap budget midfielder. And like I say, he's on pens. He's getting so forward. He's such a good option. And a lot of people are understanding that now and jumping on. Like Newcastle at home next game week is another really good game. And then they've got Leeds as well. Again, Leeds very leaky at the back. I think Saar is a pretty good option for the next two game weeks, for sure. And then finishing things off, we have Gray. Now, Gray was obviously in my transfer tips video earlier on in the week. Uh, he didn't return. 
uh, against Villa. The, the game was kind of boring, and then Villa just brought it out of the park and just literally scored three pretty good goals. Um, obviously, like I say, didn't return. His fixtures are still kind of all over the place. They've got Norwich at home next week, uh, but then they face Man United away, then West Ham, Watford, Wolves, Tottenham. Everton's fixtures get really, really good game week 19 onwards, um, but they're kind of like hit and miss at the moment. Again, he's only 5.7 mil, so if you have the funds, I don't see why you wouldn't want him in your team. He's He could have scored again, um, and, and, and he set up quite a few chances as well against Villa. He got pretty unlucky, um, but yeah, I think Gray is a decent little cho uh, choice, so maybe you have to keep him in your, in your watch list for now. Anyway, they are the top transferred in this week, um, as opposed to like before, obviously the big games happened today. Next up, we have the game week five top transfers out. So we've got Richarlison. Again, didn't know he was a massive injury concern, but he's expected back on the 17th of October. So he's out for like a month. So everybody's going to be getting rid of uh, Richarlison. Uh, again, they, they didn't say anything about this. Uh, this is this is why it's good for Gray, because now their top two strikers are out, like Richarlison and DCL are just out at the moment. So Gray is pretty much nailed now. Like Rondon's going to be obviously nailed. But they're up front free. Like, I watched the game yesterday, and they had Rondon, Townsend, and Gray up front, which is an interesting up front um, <laughs> for a side that is trying to get, like, uh, European football. So, yeah, they're, they're getting just hammered with injuries at the moment. Again, Digne was another player that just obviously scored the own goal, was a bit unlucky, but I think everyone's going to be jumping off Digne as well, to be fair, because, it, it, like, yeah, he's, he's creating chances and stuff, but he's just got no one in the box to head the ball in because their best two forwards are just out. Uh, next up, we have Torres. Again, uh, I, I kept Torres for my game week uh, five team just because I thought he would start against Southampton. Didn't start, unfortunately. Uh, didn't even come on. Uh, he's still 7.2. He's probably going to get a price drop soon. Uh, I was always going to get rid of him this week anyway and probably bring in Rafinha, even though Rafinha did ha uh, pick up a slight injury. Uh, he came off early against... Um, Newcastle because I think it was like a thigh injury or a knee injury or something like that. But yeah, I always wanted to get rid of him for Chelsea Liverpool. I'm just not feeling City players at the moment. Like Pep Roulette is just it's just too real at the moment. I mean, Cancelo is a really good option in Diaz, obviously, but Grealish also seems to be pretty nailed. So maybe if you have the, like the funds, maybe it'll great Torres to Grealish uh, because he seems to just be playing every single game. Next up, obviously Calvert Lewin. I mean, obviously he's going to get more and more transferred out. Hopefully he's a little bit cheaper though when he is fit and everyone's going to bring him back in again. He's probably going to be around 8 mil, 7.9 when he is fit to play again. Uh, Laporte, another player that's just obviously injured, expected back on the 3rd of October. I, I understand why everyone's getting rid of him. He's 5.6 mil. So to have a defender that's 5.6 mil and not playing, like you kind of want to get rid of him pretty quick. There's so many good options like Tierney, uh, Semedo, um, or you could just change him, like I say, to Cancelo if you have a couple of funds to uh, up that. So, yeah, Laporte is definitely a player that a lot of people are going to be getting rid of just because he's too expensive uh, to not play. And then Sun as well, another player that a lot of people are jumping off. He's got a calf injury, 50% chance of playing. Again, I don't know if he's playing today. Uh, team news has not um, aired yet. If he doesn't play today, then, yeah, I, I could see him, like, going down a lot more but um you know Tottenham fixtures aren't actually that bad like obviously they're playing Chelsea today then they've got Arsenal but then the Villa Newcastle West Ham United then Everton Leeds Burnley Brentford and Norwich uh their fixtures do get a little bit better so a lot of people might jump on Kane there as well but Kane just hasn't really started this season I don't think he, he looks that bothered really um so I, I don't know if that's because of the whole transfer saga or what but I don't really know um but either way that is going to be the top five most transferred in and transferred out players this week again I would have done the knee jerk thing after all the games today but i've got my wild card draft coming tomorrow so look out for that either way let me know who you're transferring in this week or who you think about uh that you're going to transfer in this week subscribe if you're brand new drop a like and until next time peace